I'm Dr. Steve Nissen, and I'm here uh, with Dr. Ali Aminian, uh, who is a, a bariatric surgeon at the Cleveland Clinic, although you like the term metabolic uh, surgery, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, uh, Dr. Aminian has just published a uh, really uh, impactful manuscript that looked at the, uh, the long-term cardiovascular outcomes in patients with diabetes and severe obesity who underwent metabolic surgery compared with usual medical care. So let's talk about your study for a minute. Uh, how many people did you actually have that underwent uh, uh, metabolic surgery? Uh, thanks, Steve, for kind introduction. So we did this paper together, uh, actually. So uh, we had uh, so we had 2,300 patients who underwent these metabolic surgical procedures over a course of uh, 20 years in the Cleveland Clinic. Yes. And the procedures that you're talking about, so you like the term metabolic surgery. Maybe you can explain that to everybody. So the, the, these procedures are called weight loss surgery or bariatric surgery or metabolic surgical procedures. We, we like metabolic term compared to the weight loss surgery because they have these procedures, these GI procedures have some metabolic effects beyond the weight loss. So that's why the metabolic surgery would be a better name for these procedures collectively. Now in previous collaborations between uh, cardiovascular medicine and the uh, bariatric surgical group, uh, you know, we had shown together that uh, we could make diabetes uh, better in people that underwent the surgery. They lose a lot of weight, their diabetes get better, many of them come off insulin. But you had a more ambitious goal. You wanted to look at uh, broader endpoints. So let's talk about the endpoints you looked at. As, uh, as you correctly mentioned, Steve, we knew before this study, we knew that these procedures significantly cause weight loss, significantly improve diabetes, but we didn't know the impact of these procedures on heart cardiovascular endpoints. Yeah. So that was the main goal of the study. So we uh, enrolled 2,300 patients who underwent metabolic surgery and we matched them to almost 11,000 patients who received usual care for their diabetes and uh, obesity in the Cleveland Clinic and we followed them up to eight years after enrollment and we studied the impact of metabolic surgery versus usual care on major cardiovascular endpoints. Yeah. And as I recall, the endpoints were, there were six of them. Uh, let, let's talk about, the, what are the six endpoints you looked at? So the primary endpoint of the study was a composite of six uh, endpoints, including all-cause mortality, coronary artery events, cerebrovascular events, heart failure, uh, kidney failure, nephropathy, and atrial fibrillation. Um, was there a favorable effect in the group that underwent surgery on every endpoint? That was favorable, striking effect for every single individual endpoints. And they were all statistically significant? Yes, stati significantly, uh, huge, uh, hugely significant. So we observed almost 40% reduction in a com primary composite endpoint, which was composite of all these six endpoints. and. For every single individual, we observe a significant reduction in these major adverse cardiovascular events. What I found the most striking was the reduction in all-cause mortality. It was 41%. 41% reduction. You know, if you think about uh, you know, the treatments we have for cardiovascular disease, including the most successful treatments that we have, like statins, we don't get a 41% reduction in mortality when we're lucky to get any reduction in mortality. So that was pretty striking. Now, this was not a randomized controlled trial. This was an observational study. And I wonder if you could maybe comment on the, what you think the take-home implications are of a study like this. So as, as you mentioned, the effect size was a striking. 41% reduction in mortality or 40% reduction in the composite endpoint was impressive. But the, but the, the limitation was that the, that was observation study. So we need to do randomized clinical trial to confirm these findings, but it's not easy to do randomized clinical trial. It's gonna be very costly, it's gonna take some time because we need to randomize 2,000, 3,000 patients to, to uh, uh, surgery versus the, the medical care and then follow them for a long period of time to see this difference. So 
we uh, we are going hopefully we're going to do that but in the meantime I think we can rely on the on the uh, results of findings of this study and similar studies like this and the take-home message would be actually few take-home message one would be that the these negative effects of obesity and diabetes on cardiovascular system would be reversible. If we have a method uh, for significant, sustained, and durable weight loss, we can prevent all these bad effects of diabetes and obesity on cardiovascular health. The second yeah. take-home message uh, would be uh, uh, awareness uh, for patients and the physicians. So I think primary care physicians, uh, cardiologists, endocrinologists, uh, if they have a patient with severe obesity and diabetes, should think about the bariatric surgery or metabolic surgery as a tool and should consider referral of, of those patients to the bariatric surgery for the assessment. Not all patients would be eligible, would be a good candidate, but at least they should consider that and they should start discussion of the, this option, this effective and safe treatment option with their patients. So these would be the take home. Now message. a couple more uh, issues. So to get into this uh, 2300 patient group, uh, how obese did you need to be? What were the kind of the things that you had to have it actually be included here? Uh, so we we have criteria for that, but but uh, broadly, patients needs to be severely obese, or needs to be mildly obese, but have severe comorbid conditions and risk factors for cardiovascular uh, problems. Uh, if the patient has BMI of forty would be eligible or a BMI of 30 to 35 uh, with multiple risk factors would be eligible. And so those would be. Now, of course, surgery has complications. Let's talk a little bit about what were the downsides, what were the things that, you know, people need to be aware of that are, you know, potential risks of the surgery. Yeah, that's right. So every, every surgical intervention have some has some complications. So these days we do these procedures with minimally invasive surgery approach. We do surgery through five or six small holes, not the big cut. Surgery usually takes about two hours. Patient usually stay in hospital one or two nights and recovery takes about two to three weeks. The risk of complications usually between three to five percent for all complications together, bleeding, infection, anesthesia problem, blood clot, heart attack, everything together. So which is very comparable to the commonly performed uh, procedures uh, like gallbladder surgery or appendectomy. So uh, overall, these are very safe procedures and the recovery is quick. And uh, you know, one of the things you tracked interesting enough is nutritional abnormalities. You always, we always worry about that. Uh, you didn't, you didn't turn up a lot of problems with that, with that with the surgery. That's right. So these procedures are good for patients who are compliant with the lifestyle change after the procedure. If we see a patient who is not compliant that would be, uh, with, with the, with the uh, recommendations after surgery, that patient wouldn't be a good candidate. In our study, about 2% of patients had severe malnutrition yeah. in, in eight years. So... Uh, that's one factor. So I always tell my patient that the surgery is not a simple fix. We give you this tool, you need to use this tool to succeed. So you need to follow the recommendation, you need to wash your diet, you need to exercise. If you don't do these things, then you're gonna wait all the gain, or you're gonna gain all the way back and you're at risk for nutritional complications. Now, can we talk just for a moment about the types of surgery that were, were included here? You know, there's several types and now it's, this has evolved in recent years. So what do most of these people have? So that's right, so it's evolving and that's, that, that's very good. So now that's why we have safer procedures and more effective procedures now. The two most common procedures in the study were either sleeve gastrectomy or gastric bypass. In sleeve gastrectomy, we 
Uh, as I mentioned, we go in inside the abdomen through five or six small incisions, it takes about an hour, and we excise about 80-85% of the stomach and we take that part out. We do not rewrote the gastrointestinal tract. In gastric bypass, again, through five or six small incisions, we go in, we cut the stomach on the upper part, we make a small pouch on the upper part of the stomach, and then we bring a loop of a small intestine up and connect to that pouch. So we rewrote the GI tract. When patients take food, foods go through the esophagus to that small gastric pouch and then directly to the small intestine. So we bypass majority of the stomach and proximal part of the small intestine. So we rewrote the GI tract. So the duodenum is involved. And do you think there's any difference in the efficacy in terms of the improvement in outcomes? Did you find any evidence of that? Uh, on this particular study, we didn't look at uh, uh, procedures uh, and we didn't compare them head to head, but their previous studies have shown that uh, gastric bypass is a bit more powerful tool in terms of weight loss and in terms of improvement of metabolic disease yeah. in the cost of a bit more uh, complication rate. So sleeve, boop. Overall, both procedures are very safe. Both procedures are very effective. Sleeve is a bit safer. Gastric bypass is a bit more effective. Yeah. So look, let's just summarize here a little bit. Uh, obviously, a study that's a landmark study uh, published in a very prominent journal, JAMA, uh, which is widely read. Uh, I think you've shown pretty clearly that uh, these metabolic surgical procedures can not only make diabetes better, but can dramatically, really uh, substantially reduce the risk of major cardiovascular complications and death in these severely obese patients. And, you know, I think it's a game changer. I think we got to now think about this more, more commonly. And, uh, you know, we hope uh, all of you will find this uh, discussion interesting. I certainly found this to be an interesting collaboration, and we're, we're very pleased to have been able to report this together. Thank you very much.